yo what is going on my people this is your boy fran 49er let me retweet this real quick it's your boy fran 49er man with niners all day uh we appreciate you guys coming uh to join us today uh we got a good show man um go ahead and press that like and subscribe or dislike even if you don't like the content dislike it um go ahead and comment uh, i'm gonna try my best to interact with everybody in the chat today uh bronze is on uh daddy duty you know what I mean? He has a little one at home. Uh, his wife is at work. So, you know, we're going to get it done. Um, today, we're going to do a film breakdown of Jaquiski Tart and Jamal Adams. We want to compare the two and see, you know, what would we, what would we add and what would we take away? Um, it's always good, man, uh, to go ahead and see, you know, what a team could add with another player. Um, and I think that it's also good to break down this film to see, uh, how good Jaquasi Tart is, because I don't think a lot of people understand how good he is. So I'm going to bring in my guy, Mr. Jason Aponte. Dre, Jason, man, what's going to, on, my guy? It's great, man. It's great to be here again, man. I appreciate uh, the invite again. And um, I'm trying to trying to help uh, 49er fans that might want to get entangled with Jamal Adams. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I had to bust down that in. That's it. That's it. That's one. That's it. I'm just getting the one uh, in, and I'm just getting it out the way. You have a... Uh, Shit. There's an expiration date on that type of stuff. So if you don't say yeah. it right away, it kind of just goes away. So I'm using it. Yeah, man. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, people, I just want to let you guys know, man, there's nobody who I think was more qualified, you know, to break down film than Jason. I appreciate uh, that. Yeah, this is exactly what the fuck he does. Um, and I'm happy that he was able to do this. And to you guys who don't know, man, this took, you know, this took some time. It took about a week to get all of this film prepared. And that's all because of Jason. So, uh, um, man, we, go ahead, I appreciate go. you for I appreciate you for putting the 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 bug in my ear to do it because um, I think I learned a lot of stuff from going through both of their film. Yeah, I think I think you're absolutely right about what you said about um, I think that people don't understand yeah. um, how good Jaquiski is. Right. I think that I I thought I knew how good Jamal Adams was until. Like, I don't know what it is about watching the film, man, but this guy, like, I, and, and we'll, we'll we'll talk through it, but I learned some stuff about both these guys when I thought I already kind of knew. Um, yeah. But Jamal Adams is, is incredible, man. Like, I was just blown away with his tape. With yeah. Jaquiski, it's a little bit more subtle, and there's things that you can see, you know, when you watch it back. Like, it doesn't pop off the screen, like, in the same way, but they, they are very similar players and very similar styles. Um, but I'm going to point out, you know, little things that each of them do that are different. Um, you know, I, the only thing that I feel like I'm not qualified to talk about is the cap figures and, you know, who's going to make what, when that goes on, like, I'll leave that to, you know, right. the Twitter GMs and all those people and stuff like that. <laughs> um, right. but, but, but as far as like play styles, I was really, 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 uh, I was, I was surprised at how much they kind of mirror each other in the way that they play, you know, strong safeties have a certain way that they play. Um, you know, usually most of the time that's the safety that's in the box the most and things like that. But I'm super surprised that if like I like was able to take the numbers and the jerseys off their back, sometimes they kind of look the same. Yeah, man. And that's what I was trying to tell people. Um, they have a very, very similar play style. Uh, both of them are box safeties. Uh, great on run support. Pretty good on uh, coverage. But um, I was alerted yesterday that um, Jamal Adams had like. I think his his coverage PFF grade was like 20 points higher. But I mean, you know, PFF, we don't necessarily know what the grading score is. They have an algorithm where they study a lot of shit that goes into that grading. So you never know. Um, also, you know, Jaquasi was hurt for a few games. So maybe that might have hurt his score also. You know what I mean? So I think you're absolutely right about that. And I think that what the the, the real downside to Tukowski right now is the injuries, right? Um, you know, he, he the best availability, the best ability is availability, right? Is what they always say. But I kind of wanted to circle back on what you were saying about PFF's grades because I kind of have a little bit of insight in how that works. Um, oh, let's go. Let's go. Yeah. So basically, basically what happens is, is there's a scale of um, negative two to two that someone can grade a play, okay? So what right. that means is two is like, a two on a play is like the the what's the, the it's the equivalent of Mario Manningham catching that pass in the Super Bowl and getting two feet in, like it's that high the two like it has to be that good of a play to get a two, but okay. you can you can go from two to all the way negative two, which is essentially like throwing a pick in the end zone in a red zone, you know like that's yeah. like probably the worst. But what we have to really take into account when it comes to PFF, and I want everybody to understand this because they quote it as the gospel. It's a very good way 
to judge people because they're, you know, they have a grader who grades the play and then they send it to a board of former coaches, scouts and, and such that will follow up on your grade and either add, take away. It's, it's a group thing. It's not, it's wow. not, so it's not just PFF. It's no. actually like a board of directors. Well, it's, it's a group board. that works for PFF. Like they like, so what happens is if you're a grader, right. And the only right. reason that I, that I knew this is because I, for a little while was um, auditioning to, to become a data collector for them, which is basically they send you the film of the college games and you okay. have to identify each player on, 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 on the 11 on offense, the 11 on defense, where they're playing, right? So um, the the difference between one step to the left and one step to the right is him being, is a player being regarded as a L-O-L-B or an O-L-B. Like, so that's, that's kind of, so that's just data collecting, right? That's right. not even grading. So right. what happens is, is as the data collector, you knock that out, you send that to the graders. The graders watch each play over and over. Even when they're not involved in the play, they somehow get graded, which will be a zero. So a zero will be a grade. Like if you're a receiver and they run the ball the other way and you don't have anything to do, that's a zero. Like you didn't right. do anything on that play. Right. But they grade it and then they pass it to the PFF board. Like it's those guys that, but it, they're all scouts, ex old coaches and things like that. And who like kind of review your work. And then they come up with like the final score for, for those guys. Um, yeah. So, I mean, that I hope that gives you guys a little bit of insight when it comes to PFF, because it is a valuable data um, entity, but it's not the end all be all because it's still subjective. What you might right. think is a one, I might think is a 1.5 or I might think is a two, you know, so right. it's it, it kind of boils down to that. So I, I just I think there's a, a misconception when it comes to PFF that's out there um, about how they work. Um, and, and I think that they catch a lot of hate um, when 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 PFS data doesn't conclude to the thing that you want it to conclude to. Then right. they kind of they kind of catch the heat for it. And, you know, exactly. and you just have to remember it's subjective. So it's nothing yeah. to get all worked up about that. And, and that's not necessarily the gospel. But the other thing that I wanted to say, too, I know I'm just talking a lot, but no, um, should, go ahead, bro. So Jamal Adams, when it comes to coverage ranks among 39, 39 safeties with 30 plus targets. OK, um, yards after the catch per reception, he's first two point nine. Um, yards per reception, second, 7.5. Yards per target, 4.5. He's second. Yards per cover snap, second. He's 0. 0.31. That's elite. And and if I had to guess who the other one is, it's probably Derwin James. Um, right. If I if I was guessing, I could be wrong. You know, with well, that. he but didn't that play just, last year, so right. I would oh, there say, you go. Yeah, it might be somebody like Justin Simmons. Uh, right. And yeah, he needs with, to get a deal. Yeah, he does. Cause he's that guy, uh, or or maybe Minka. You know what I mean? Yeah. Minka, oh no! Well, there you go. There's there's yeah. that's probably it right there. Yeah. Um, yeah. and um, what I wanted to talk about Jaquiski a little bit too, cause like you know we're talking about Adams, but I I want people to understand the effect that was left that was felt when he left um the team when he was injured oh, in the Ravens we've game. Seen it. Like we've right seen away, seen it. Yeah, right. Yeah, most definitely. So from week one to thirteen, the team allowed nineteen. This is thirteen games, right? Or twelve games, right? Cause they have a bye week. Twelve games. 19 explosive pass plays, 5%. After the rib injury, 15 in four games. That's 9%. That's crazy. That, that's bad, right? The, yeah. And then the defense was third in the NFL with a 41% red zone touchdown percentage. So that means four out of 10, basically, when you get to the red zone that you're going to score. Right. That was third. But in December alone, that number jumped up to 60%. Now, there's a counter argument to that, right? So you could look at that data, right, without – evaluating the, the competition and say, wow, Jaquiski means this much. But there's also who was the competition that was being played later on in the year? You know, like right. and 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 that kind of and obviously we saw, you know, the 49ers had their death stretch of, you know, we're supposed to lose all those games, Ravens, Packers, Saints, all those games, you know, didn't happen. We went, we we went three and one. Right. Um but when the competition grew, um you started to see without him that he brings a lot of things to the table. And what I was finding when I was watching his, his tape is the cover skills are, are underrated for sure. And there's one more, there's one more tweet that I wanted to, that I wanted to um, reference. It's not my tweet KP show who does a great job um, on, on Twitter. Um, this is, this is something for all 49er fans to, to use as far as, because I remember the last time we were on, remember we were talking about Warner and no, no, no we we're talking about Greenlaw and, and Quan's um, yeah. cover skills. Right. right. So I want to I want to break. I, I have he tweeted about the linebackers and he tweeted about the secondary. It's a little bit eye opening. So um, he tweeted KP show um, on Twitter. Football outsiders released their almanac and the 49ers have six players who finished top 15 in success rate in coverage. OK. Fred Warner, 67, fourth. 
Quan Alexander, 67%. Fourth, Greenlaw, 57, 14th. That's three. Now in the secondary, this is going to blow your mind. Tart, 75%. Second, 75%. Jimmy Mosley, uh, Jimmy Mosley, Jimmy Ward, 72%. And and uh, Emmanuel Mosley, 62%, which is ninth. Put some that's, respect on the quiz, right. man, bro. That's eye-opening. Like, if you – if Look, I'm not going to be here when we start. Well, I'm going to start the clips in a second, but I'm not here to argue whether Jaquiski Tart is better than Jamal Adams. I think no, no. everybody kind of knows that. Right. But the question that you have to ask yourself is when you bring in somebody as good as Jamal Adams, right? You understand that you have to pay him, right? Now we can pay Tart and pay him way less. I'm not getting into the cap figures or anything like that, but he's not going to command what Jamal Adams is looking for not or rightfully all. deserves at this point. Not at all. Now, do you value what he brings to the team and the cap hit that it can cause? Because remember, there's so many guys that we have to make sure that we take care of besides Kittle, besides Trent Williams. I know you have strong feelings about the 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 the, the pay George Kittle crowd, um, <laughs> but we do have to pay those guys. And and everything would have been a lot easier. I feel like I think this would have been a done deal already for Adams if COVID wasn't here, because without the revenue coming in, there's no sure bet that the salary cap is going up next year. The best case scenario is that it's flat. If it's flat, then then you know they'll they'll have something to work with. But if it dips in any way, then you're gonna start to see Parag's gonna have to come up with with some sort of magic to to make all these deals happen. Because the Chiefs are just signing everybody to all these huge deals, and and, and I don't know, and they had like twelve dollars in cap. And 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 one thing I was happy to see was, I think that as a franchise, like we were kind of waiting to see what type of money was gonna be dished out before the deadline, right? Yeah. I mean, we've seen hella deals get done. You know, we we seen uh 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 Miles uh uh Miles Garrett get done. Uh, we seen um Derrick Henry get done. Nobody even thought that was going to happen. We thought he was going to play on a cap, right? Honestly, so honestly, I, Derrick Henry's deal is not bad. Honestly, for everybody who hates the the running back being paid, that wasn't bad. That's exactly that's what the franchise idea. tag would have cost them. Right. Yeah. So I mean, you know, I, I think like the Niners are like okay. They're dishing out money. I think we're going to be okay. And, you know, I'm pretty confident that we might see a George Kittle deal coming up pretty soon. But at the same time, I'm not going to be surprised if he's not a Niner after 2020. Listen, guys, um, I'm just going to tell you guys, relax, please. Um, like, look, I understand you wanted him to get paid. I get it. I want I want all football players to get paid. Okay? Exactly. Like, like Raheem Mostert, get your money, bro. Like, it, at this point, you're 28, right? This is the most leverage that you have. Get every single cent you can because every time that you step on the field might be the last time that you ever play. So why not? I, I'll never fault the player for trying, but you guys have to chill. It's going to happen. Kittle would never hold out. Based on the new CBA rules, it makes it virtually impossible for you to hold out. Right. Um, because I don't know yeah, if you guys... Because you used to get penalized. Uh, there used to be, um, a, I think it was 40 grand. Now it's 50 grand with the new CBA. Right, so, and... <laughs> and the other thing is, too, it's more money, but the teams were allowed to waive those things when, when the lockout went when, – when your holdout went away. Now no, they can't, can't waive it no, at all. You got to pay that money. If you miss five days of training camp, you have lost your season. Um, George Kittle can't do that. Nobody no, can do that. Raheem no, Mostert can't do that. And that's 250 grand. Right. <laughs> Go on. So, so um, just relax, guys. They'll get it done. And what you have to remember about this regime – this, this extension is going to come out of nowhere. We're going to wake up on a random Tuesday, and you're going to see Shefty drop the bomb, and boom, it's out. There's no leaks in this regime. No one saw the Trent Williams deal coming. You know, all I heard, all I heard, I, I went back and I started looking because it's so funny. You hear people, people say so many things on Twitter to you, and they, they, they're like, oh, I, I guarantee this happens. I, I, like, pulled up 15 tweets. Oh, Washington will never trade with Shanahan. They hate him. Washington will never trade with Shanahan. I even said it. Yeah, no, of course. I it makes sense. It, yeah. It's, it's not Snyder that they got the deal done. It was Rob Rivera. Right. Ron yeah. Rivera. He, like, he, yeah. he kind of was just like, look, we got to do something here. And, yeah. and you know, it seems like Ron Rivera is there to, like, really, really, really change everything that's going on over there. He they, gave lot. they gave you yes. food. They said, yeah. you went to a Super Bowl. We trust you. You've had mm-hmm. some pretty damn good teams. Uh, Snyder moved aside and he gave him the keys, man. Because yeah. Ron Rivera, he seemed like he's a, a strong alpha male. He's not with the bullshit. You're either going to let me be the head coach and, and let me run my show how I want to run it, or I'm not going to be here. You know what I, I mean? would I would advise anybody who wants to know what Ron Rivera is about is to go on Amazon Prime and watch All or Nothing, 
which is better than Hard Knocks for me because Hard Knocks is only the preseason. Yeah, that's no. when I that's when I knew that Ron Rivera was not only one a stand up guy but a great coach. Um, yeah. you know, the, a quick story: De Devin Funches in his last year there, right, was struggling, 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 couldn't catch passes, anything like that. Finally, it comes out after a few weeks that he's been struggling with the death of a family member. And instead of Ron Rivera saying, you know, why didn't you tell me we could have given you time off to get you right? He came to him and he put his arm around him while Devin Funches is crying and told him, dude, why don't you talk to me? Like, you know, like tell me about these things that are going on. And 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 that screams leadership, right? Like, and and do not underestimate the fact that a guy who played on the 85 Bears and is, was as tough as nails defense, that, that doesn't hold weight when he walks in a room and talks to other grown men. Like that, exactly. that matters. He understands how to get it, he understands how to get it done. And he also is a force when he's in the room. Like, and he yeah. never talks down to his players. I walked away from that all or nothing, very impressed with Ron Rivera and very surprised that they got rid of him and just and just, you know, like I don't think they needed to go in another direction, but hey, you know, I, I don't make those decisions. It is what it is. Yeah, right, let's get this film going. Yeah, bro, let's get this film going. All I've been right. for this all week. <laughs> all right. So who are we starting with first? I'm gonna let you, I'm gonna let you um, um I'm gonna let you choose. I think it's good to start with our guy first, so then we can get okay. back to Harrison. And all right. So guys, you know, I mean, I'm probably in is this in the way? Like, or you guys could just see my nah, screen, bro. Right? I, can't, I don't think I don't think you shared it correctly because I can't see it. Let me see. It says StreamYard is sharing your screen. Yeah, it says like it should be good. Uh, you're in the show. Everyone can see and hear you, it says right now. Uh, I'm, I'm going to ask. Let me stop it and do it again. I'll try one more time. All right. Your entire screen share. Good now? Let me see. Let me pull up one of the plays. You see that? No? No. -uh. Let, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Let me try this one. No? Nothing? Ah, bro. Let me see. Let me fix it. Let me try to. Let me try the other. Um, sorry, guys. I apologize. This is all me. This is this is user error right here. Um, application yeah. window. Is it this? The Chrome tab? No. Application window. Maybe this one. Let me try this. Better? No. Uh, you gotta click on. Hold on. Let me see. Good. Is that it now? Like I. Oh yeah. I. I see a whole bunch of stuff now. Let me see. Let me hide. Oh, that was really. Um, right, see, when you screen. click the screen share, you have to click the actual. You you all right now? You now go click the actual when that extra screen pops up. You have to click on it. Mm -hmm. I did that. I pressed um. Let me see. Let me try one more time. Share screen. Click the click that, and then share. No. There it is. Right yeah, or is that you? That, that was me. That's you. So that's what yeah. I just did. That, I mean, it was so easy last time. Hold on. Share screen. Ah, oh, shit, man. Let's see. Edit name. You're in the show. Everyone can see and hear you. Can people on, on or can people on YouTube? Well, you have to be able to see it too, right? Yeah. That's the thing when you share. Let me see. So, and then click, you said click the, click this. You got yeah. I don't know why it's not. It, it worked perfectly fine last time. Stop sharing. I apologize, guys. Give me a sec. Stop sharing. Okay. I'm going to try one more time. Application window. Uh, let me see. Is that there now? No. Yeah, it is. There you go. It is right there. Yep. All right. We're good. Perfect. Okay, cool, cool, cool. All right, guys. So I think I kind of wanted to start. Let me see. Let me just try to pull this up real quick and see if it shows. Does it show? Does that show? No, right? Nah, it, it's. It, I mean, I I see that you clicked on it, but but it didn't show on the screen, right? Let me see. Uh, let me try one more time. Let me try one more time. Damn, it just went off too. Yeah, because I had to. Because it's only allowing me to show you like that folder. It's not allowing me to show you. Um, is this something I have to do on here? Give me a sec. I don't know why this worked perfectly fine. I thought I set it up right. Um, just give me a sec, guys. I'm sorry. If you want to talk real quick, Dre, while I work through this, if you want to talk about some other stuff real quick while I try to. Yeah, man. Um, I mean, this is one of the topics that we we're going to talk about after we did the, after we did the the actual film breakdown. But um, well, I mean, we could talk. Could, we could talk a little bit about the pay George Kittle thing, right? Like you know, like that. That seems yeah, like something. Yeah. That uh, so somebody said yes, they saw it, but not anymore. Um, okay. Yeah, man. Damn, this is all bad, bro. I think we should have did the test run with this. Test it. Let me see. Let me see. 
stop screen. Okay, share screen. Boom. Let me see. Can 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 anybody see anything? Like is it like is anybody um, watching? They said they could see anything. Let me see. Um, desktop. Twenty-two. Come on, hurry up. No, nobody sees anything. Hold on. There we go. There it is. Got it. Perfect, guys. Okay, cool. Okay, guys. So I think that um. You know, a lot of the things that you see that are that are said is like, you know, oh, well, you know, Kwaski doesn't get a lot of interceptions. Kwaski doesn't get a lot of um, fumbles. You know, honestly, when I was going through both of their films, honestly, Adams has, what is it, two, three interceptions um, and a few fumble recoveries. One of them is amazing and it's part of his, it's part of what I've got for him. But what I want people to understand is that strong safeties are not built to get turnovers. They're not necessarily ball hawks like that. Um mm -hmm. You know, like you said, box safeties, like like Cam Chancellor isn't a ball hook. Like, you know, like he'll make a play, you know, on an interception or stuff like that that's in front of him. But he's not a guy who's lurking, looking for the ball. He's looking to knock your head off. Right. So here, I, I've got a play here. So this is fourth and 12. Um, This is basically the end of the game Um, with the Steelers. Um, But what I want you to pay attention to is I want you to let me just start it up real quick. So let me get it slower. All right. Move it up. OK, guys. So. So what I want you to notice is that obviously this is desperation time, right? Mason Rudolph's not that good at all, you know? So, like, this isn't something that we should really be taking proud of. But, look, this is Kwaski up here, right? You see that? Yeah. So, look, this is – so, look, this is Kwaski right here. Let me move this out the way. Kwaski has two options right here, right? Can you move so, it a little bit bigger, bro? Yes, for sure, for sure. Is that better? Per yeah, that's better. That's a little better, yeah. Just a little better or – Yeah. Uh. All right, yeah, because that's the, like the whole screen. All right, all right, it's all good. All right, cool. So he's got two options right here, right? So he can either so right here you have to carry you have to carry this route right to to the backside. If he sees that Mason Rudolph, he's just reading his eyes at this point. If he even sees Mason Rudolph check to him, he's got him lined up right here for this is where the sticks are. So he's got him lined up to stop him, right? That ball's got to come out there. quasi has got a good, good, good shot right there, but he's reading his eyes. So the ball's gonna come here. Um, let me keep going with it. Okay, so here's the throw, right? Watch it. See, look how Kwaski right there is on his back foot, right? Because he knows he has to watch. I believe that's Deontay Johnson, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. And if, if I'm not mistaken, this is either James Washington or Juju Smith-Schuster. The ball's out. So he took his step, and now look at how quick Kwaski's back. The ball's in the air. Kwaski's already back. Yeah, that's James Washington. Look, that ball's thrown right to Kwaski because he thinks that Washington's going to be there, and look, dropped it. So when you start to say things about people who can't get interceptions and things like that, you always have to remember, guys, um, defensive backs are usually wide receivers that can't catch. Um, right. and, and that's fickle, that, that interception stuff, right? Like, Because I can show you a Jamal Adams interception where he didn't do anything necessarily special but put his hands up and get his hands on the ball. Right. What I wanted to tell you is, is that if you think that, you know, Kwaski is just a two interception guy for the whole season, that might not be true because I have a few clips of him dropping interceptions that, you know, are that. Are, so I expect that there's going to be some sort of positive regression to the, to the mean with when it comes to those sort of things, when it comes to interceptions, because um, people I think the book is kind of out on the 49ers. Right. It's like, OK, if you're going to pass, you just you have to worry about the pass rush. But I don't think people are really scared of our secondary would you say that that's true um not that they not that they shouldn't be scared i'm just saying do you think that people are scared like i think I, they should be nervous a little I, bit i mean i don't think nobody respects us to be honest right that's what i'm saying so i think that yeah. people are going to go into this season saying okay We've got to hit them. We've got to hit them, you know, in the secondary, and we've got to run the ball on them because you can't sit there and let these long developing routes happen because the pass rush is just going to be in your face the entire time, and that's just not a, uh, it's not going to work. Um, right. But I think that what happens is, is if that when that happens and Kwaski starts to see more opportunities, he's going to turn those into interceptions. You know, he he might have one of those outlier years where he has six, seven interceptions. You know, like like look, Stephon Gilmore has six, and he's the best cover corner in the league. And nobody exactly. tries him, you know, like nobody throws him. And yet he still was able to turn those into six picks. So I think that that's a little bit fickle and it's a little bit overrated when it comes to talking about, you know, when you talk about interceptions being a way to judge strong safeties. OK, right. um, that's just one example. Right. What I want to show you is is playing in the box. Right. 
So we talked about it. Box safety, right? You guys can see this is better. Um, yeah. So this is the divisional, divisional game. Um, and I want to, I want you to watch real quick. Let's move this up. All right. So right there is Jaquaski, right? Let's see. Let me show. Sure. This is him here. No, no. Yep. All right. No, no, no. He's in the box. I'm sorry. All right. He's in the box. Yeah, I got to move to. All right, here we go. So this this is the best angle right here, okay? So what I want you to see is Kwaski right there, obviously being the, the quarterback and everything as well for the defense. Check this out. Move to the right. He sees it all happening. Fake handoff. And this is a screenplay. Remember, the, the Vikings couldn't do anything in this game. They sure couldn't. Screen pass. Dre's not in the best position right there to tackle him because Cook's just moving the other way, but Tart's got him. Horrible angle. Tart's got him. Right. It's it's stuff like that. Like when you when you're playing in the box, um, obviously since you're the safety, you have to be the last line of defense. But when you're up there, it's it shows confidence and you know the defense shows confidence in you because they know you can make those type of plays. Avert right. your eyes, guys. I have a Super Bowl clip here. I don't want to show you this, but it did come up on mine. Okay, so this is at a point when the game is 10-10 in the second quarter. I still haven't fully rewatched this game, guys. So don't don't ask me anything about it. You know, I don't, um, think, I don't think I can. I don't think I had the stomach for it either. I think I watched yeah. that Ravens game like last year for the first time, and that's not the last time I'll ever watch that game as well. Yeah. Uh, so let's move up here. So this is third and fourteen, right? This seems easy. I feel like Kansas City was giving up on this play because they knew that they couldn't do anything like this. That. Yep, got it. So let's bring this down here. So we've got Tart up here. Um, this is going to be a screen, a screen pass to um, Damian Williams here. So let's just move this faster. Now, I just want you to notice, Tart's at the sticks. Yeah, <laughs> that's 14 yards out, right? This play goes for one yard, and I want you to watch how this happens. So they try to – what the Chiefs are trying to do here is the window dressing thing that, that Kyle does, right? They want, to, they want you to see Tyreek Hill. They want you to get nervous that he's going to go into the flat or he's going to come right back, and he does go into the flat. They could have thrown this out here, but look. One, two, three guys, you're not getting to the sticks, okay? Right. So you show them this. You think that because one, two, and three guys are watching, Mosley's off, Jimmy's back here, Sherm's up here watching, making sure that Kelsey doesn't get to the sticks, but this ball is already coming out. Mahomes is already throwing it here to Damian Williams, okay? This is getting blocked up here by the lineman. Watch how quickly. Look, one yard. One yard. You know how quickly you have to move from here to there to get a one yard? He got up there quick, bro. God, Nothing, man. Nothing, man, and that ends the drive. Like stuff like that is the underappreciated. Like, like again, the Adam stuff that I have pops off the film because it's just something. Like he has this extra gear that that is it's hard to see on on the TV screen when you're watching a game, but it comes no. off the screen when you're watching the film. But right. Kwaski is so fast to get from there to there. I think that it's underappreciated. Now here's a play that everybody knows, right? This one's easy. Here's a play that everybody knows. So you already know where I'm going with this. This is the Seattle game, right? And yeah, they're driving. Look at that, buddy. Yep. So they're driving right now on this play, right? So again, Kwaski's here. I want you to watch him get back. Look. He was that's, way across the on the other side of the field, that's, bro. That's DK Metcalf, guys. That is that is the human Adonis himself. This man, look, <laughs> I want you to watch from here. I want you to watch from here. And I want you to show, I want you to see the strength it takes to rip this ball away. So there's Dre. He's getting stiff arm, putting his hands on the ball and taking it away from Metcalf, man. Like I, that play right there was at the time in the year, one of the biggest plays of the year right off the bat, yeah. you know, only to be outdone in that game by Dre Greenlaw's interception um, in overtime. Yeah. But if they score that touchdown, who knows how that it's game goes? Game. It's a different game. Right. And he he swung. He swung the game back to us because it was after that Emmanuel Sanders left the game. You know, Kittle was already not playing. Um, and I think that the cracks in um, our depth as far as wide receivers go kind of showed in that game. And and remember, Joe Staley was back from his finger injury. Um, and right. he was just he was just getting worked. Like, that was one of those games. There's always one game a year that Clowney goes crazy. It just happened to be that one um, yeah. against us. Okay. Yeah. Um, I got another drop pick for you guys. Again, this is the Carolina game. We're, you know, clearly blowing them out, right? Like, these yeah. are these are the easy ones to, to, to watch, right? But. I wanted to show you real quick. So Kyle Allen, right? They went into this game thinking that everything was going to be good. So here's here's Kwaski down here. Okay, he's in the box and he's he's just they're playing they're playing zone right here. But this throw is awful. But look, he dropped the interception. Like right. again, it was, it was right there in his hands. Right, all he had to do was catch that turn and run. That's that's six. Um, right. and you can see it from this angle too as well. See the motion moves everybody away, 
And Kwaski's just watching Kyle Allen's eyes, who hadn't thrown a pick before this game or something like that yet. Like, that's right into his breadbasket. And I think that next year, what you're going to see is you're going to see, you know, provided that he's on the team, is you're going to see an increase in interceptions because he has so many opportunities and he just didn't cash them in, guys. Like, like, see, that's that's the correlation between just strictly going by numbers and strictly watching film, right? Like, stats is a good indicator. It's not the all indicator. Film is the one that kind of gives you the context as to why things are happening. And and the two interceptions, he could have four. That's four right there. Um, right. I got one more to show you guys. This was um, week one in Tampa. And this shows you how valuable he is when it comes to, you know, stopping the run and getting better at stopping the run. Because if we could all agree, that's the one thing that the 49ers had issues with was stopping the run. Um, and I wouldn't even say it was a major issue, but in comparison to how good the pass defense was, Right. Um, the run game I mean, left we, a little we, bit. We we were ranked 17, so that's you know that that's not good. That's, <laughs> it's not good yeah, at all. We, it's we not. Top, right. It's so crazy how you have a, a top one, top two in pass defense, and then it's just like the other way around. Like it's 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 just it's crazy for that to be that way with this team. But um, yeah. this is a, a run play. This is Ronald Jones. Um, this is week one. So look, Kwaski's up in the box like a linebacker. Okay, it almost looks like four three. With uh, right. we're just we're just single man high and and um and man out here, right? It, it that's that's kind of the role that they have Kwaski in is being able to move him there and then move him back. They right. don't necessarily rush him too many times. He has sacks, but if he's he got a sack and I didn't really want to put it on here as a clip because I attribute that more to um I think it was the Forrest Buckner blowing the play up and by the time they turned to look at him, it was really he like kind of turned right into Tart. And the same right. thing could be said for Jamal Adams, except for like one or two which I have clips of, but Jamal Adams, for the large part, got some sacks because the play was blown up um, by someone on the line. So okay. it really just boils down to how you look at what do you what do you value more? Do you value hurries or do you value sacks? Like, I feel like hurries and pressures is a better way to gauge how defensive linemen play. And the same thing goes for, you know, if you're if you're going to be sending safeties on blitzes. So right, right. here's Kwaski. Look, this is there's a hole there. Right. So he right here, everyone's blocked up. This moment right here, Kwaski has to stop this. If not, then he's out here boogieing with uh, Godwin out here, and I, don't, I think that's Brashad Perryman out there ready. But he has to make this stop right here at this point. Not only does he make the stop, he stops him yards behind the line. Like that's I'm gonna show it from this angle. This is really where it's gonna you're gonna be impressed by. It. Solomon Thomas is here. That's Ronald Blair there. They both do a good job of putting pressure on the alignment to get to get Tart his his lane. See, look. They're pushing, they're pushing Thomas away. But look at all this lane right here. Like I said, if Tart doesn't come down here and stop him here, he's got yeah. all this room out here to work with. Yeah. And that's it. Tart's in there. And look, he gave by him slowing him up that little bit, OJ Howard can't stop Ronald Blair right there. So right. it's it's all it's all a matter of what you value. And I think that when it comes down to, like I said, I'm not here to compare Jamal Adams to Jaquiski Tart. I'm just here to point out the similarities of their games and how it might not be such a slam dunk for you to just want to go run out there and get Jamal yeah, Adams. Jamal Adams, all of that. Right. Money. Right. Yeah. Exactly. You know, especially because you kind of stuck with Kwaski when when he was when he was injured and things like that. And and he sees all the stuff that that's going on 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 Twitter as well, too. I really I I've, I've noticed that a lot. Um right. he he sees it and he's using it as motivation. The only issue for me that Kwaski has is injuries. That's it. But it's a game of contact. It's going to happen. You can't label somebody injury prone. <laughs> like, it just – people just get hit. It's part of the game. So. Right. All right. You guys ready to get into some Adam stuff? Yeah, man. Let's see this, bro. Let's see this, man. So the difference the, – the, the main difference that I noticed between Jamal Adams and Jaquiski Tart when I was watching their film is Jamal Adams does things that Jaquiski can't. And what I mean by that is – and I'm going to start with a game from 2018. What I mean by that is is – the Jets have no problem moving him down from strong safety and having him follow a tight end. And to be exact, this tight end in 2018 that I'm talking about in this game, it was it was spectacular. Some of the things that he did is against Gronk. Now, look, 2018 Gronk is not the same as 2014 Gronk. I think we all know that. But right. 2018 Gronk still made one of the best catches of the season and let and helped his team win a championship and was used in the Chiefs game. Like he still has it and he's still a huge man, right? Right. The Jets felt so safe, even in 2018, to just say, go get him, Jamal. 
and follow him wherever he goes. And you're going to you're going to cover him in the slot. You're going to cover him when he splits wide. So um, I got a pass breakup here. That is a man pass breakup. This is the Jamal Adams is the perfect combination of fast and strong. Right. Like, I, I don't know how he, you can be both like that, honestly. And honestly, I think that a lot of 49ers fans feel a way towards him is because they feel like we should have him on our team. We should have drafted him. But you cannot right a wrong by just going to say, all right, let's fix it and go get him. Like, I don't think that that's what should be done. I don't think that that's smart unless you have a plan in place, which, again, I'm not privy to and I'm not here to talk about contract details and the cap and all that. That's up right. to them to figure out. If they think they can do it, then you have to kind of trust the front office in this, right? So let me make this bigger. All right. Let me move this down. So Jamal Adams is here, okay, right here. This is Gronk, okay? Now, what happens is in this play, so I want you to see the motion, and he goes back. Let me move up. So this is zone, right? So right here, the linebacker carries Gronk and then turns right back to the quarterback because it's not his job to cover him. Adams is over here, but Adams is very much responsible for Gronk here. That's part of his zone. So what you're going to see is he gets away from there. Now, look, Brady sees it because he's reading Brady right here. He's reading him. The ball's out. Look, it's up. Gronk's got it, and he just gets washed right there, and the ball's out. Like I he smacked it. Get yes, out. Now, yeah, now here's here's the better way to look at it because I want you to see it. So number 50 right here is going to carry Gronk to pass his zone, turn right back and get into his zone, and Jamal Adams is responsible for – you know how the, there's almost like a spy for the quarterback? Like Jamal yeah. Adams was tasked with like watch Gronk, make sure Gronk doesn't go crazy on us. So here we go. Look, he, he knocks him off his route real quick, turns back, because now his his zone is here, and he has to watch this guy going across. Brady lets it go. Look, hold on. I want to make sure that you see it. Look, it's there. And look, I know it's a little blurry. But, right. ooh, man, to get Gronk to drop that ball and knock it out right there, um, I just don't understand how you were able to cover that much ground that quickly and then still knock it out. Right. Here's the second pass breakup, which I find even more impressive, actually. I started with that one because I wanted to save the best for last. Where is Gronk primarily used, guys? I mean, well, Dre, you know, right here. This yeah. is Gronk. This is Gronk City, right? So look, right. they have Gronk down here on the bottom. Okay, Jamal Adams is following him. This is corner. This is this is on an island. This it's is a strong. This is a strong no. safety right here. I don't know. That, I don't know that Jaquaski Tar can do this. I don't know that yet because the 49ers have never asked him to do that. So let's run the play. Look, this is this is. This this play was called, and Brady knows exactly where he's going with the ball before anything. Like, this isn't a read. He's not going through progressions. He sees there's one, there's man down here, and there's single high up top, and he's going here to the end zone with Gronk. So this is pretty much what you've seen their whole careers. Ball's up. Jamal Adams is there to knock it away. But I want to I want you to see it from this angle right here. Okay. Let's go, Brady. So you look again. Doesn't look at anybody. Just see. Now right. he already, you know where he's going to go with the ball. Right. He's yeah. not looking at anybody. It's up. It's up. And Jamal Adams is there to, like, almost intercepted. Like, Gronk had to play DB there. That's how good he got on, on his inside and used the leverage right there to force him into a spot where that throw is not it's not catchable. Right. Um, That's what Jamal Adams can do that Jaquaski, I feel like, I don't want to say can't, but they haven't asked him to do that yet. Right. Um, And that makes sense. Like, can you imagine having this sort of weapon in your arsenal, right? Like, you're strong safety. You can play in the box. You can cover tight ends. You know, you pretty much cover everybody. It's it's a luxury that not many teams have. And I want to show you. So this one is a this one's a a highlight that everybody pretty much has seen, right? So this is uh, the MetLife Bowl. You know, I'm from Jersey, so this is always a big deal when this happens and the Jets and the Giants play. Which I don't care. I just laugh at whoever loses. <laughs> um, <laughs> so um, Jamal Adams is right here. Distinctly, you can tell who he is because he wears the white band, uh, the white um, armbands. So what I want you to watch is Saquon Barkley is a man, right, Dre? Like a, a man, man. A grown ass man. Uh, yes, a grown ass 22, 23 year old man. All right. Yeah. I want you to watch Jamal Adams discard him when he tries to pull up on his block. So here's Adams again. Okay. Got a clear path. Look, Barkley's got him, right? Barkley sees him from yards away, so he knows what's coming. Discarded. Like, completely discarded him. Like, you're right. out of the way. And right. he rips, rips the ball away from Daniel Jones. Pick six. I mean, uh, fumble recovery six. Watch it from this angle. This is more impressive. 
like Barkley doesn't catch him late. Barkley knows where he's at. He knows where his protection is, right? Look, fake handoff, he's in his spot. He's got two, three yards right there to figure out what he's going to do. Look, push, push. Oh, give me the ball. Me, yeah. Watch. Look, oh, one more time, guys. One more time, guys. Guys, that's incredible. Like, that that pops off the screen, honestly. That's something that is God-given. Here's, here's another one. Here's another one where just, like, these blockers, running backs, anybody like that, when you try to get in Jamal Adams' way, you're in for a rude awakening, okay? Let me move this to the bottom. All right. So we got Jamal Adams here looking like yeah. he's going to rush. He's on the edge. So this whole formation screams run. Right, like it, it's the idea that clearly you have more linemen, you have a bunch of tight ends in there, you have one receiver that's Smokey Brown up there. Okay, now look, shedding that blocker out of the way, tackle for loss. Like I, I'm not certain how. Again, he's lined up with no head start, nothing like that. But this poor, poor, poor wide receiver <laughs> has to try to block him, and it's just like you set him up for failure. Look, move. And move, and he's done right there behind the line. Like, oh my god, get out of his way. He's a grown man. Okay, now I'll show you. Let's see, this tackle for loss is really impressive too, for two reasons. I'm in love with um, Adam's technique here um, when it comes to to setting the edge because he does exactly what he's supposed to do here. Okay, uh, I'm trying to figure out where he is. Okay, so look, Jamal Adams is following James Washington here, right? Yeah, which talk to with him. Yeah, so that you know, that's something that he can do and something that defenses have seen already at this point, right? So look how quickly he recognizes run because he's not running a route. He can tell you can tell when the receiver's in his and he's not coming out of his break, and he's he, that's already a run. That's your first sign. Right. You're gonna try to block him. Sorry. Now look, he sets the edge here. He's in a position where Connor has he cannot go this way. If he goes this way, he's gonna lose more yards. Right. Now, if you cut back in, you have to make this play, right? Yeah. Sure enough, man. Like it's just that's just – that is not as impressive or I want to say that's not as, like, groundbreaking, but it's as fundamentally sound as it comes to setting and, and, the edge. And his recognition of the play was – Exactly. It was quite – it was very quick, bro, because right. he, he's Watch. on James Washington. Mm -hmm. Ball so snap. Cool. He knows. He that shit right away. And, look, gets his hands off of him, makes sure that he disengages quickly. Now, Check look – Yep. Connor has nowhere to go. What your job is when you're on the corner, no matter if you're a linebacker, no matter if you're a defensive end, turn him back in back to your guys. Don't let him run away from your guys. Right. Once you turn back in, it's over. Adams is going to bring you down because he know, and, and he also has help here. But if he doesn't set that edge and he goes for the flashy tackle, Connor's going to bounce that outside on him. Um, mm -hmm. and, and I'll show you a pick six, but again, I'll show you – a play that I don't necessarily give Adams all the credit for, but he's clearly a playmaker when the ball's in his hands because he can take it to the crib at any moment. Okay. Right. So this game's well in hand. Jared Stidham's in the game. Um, you know, Patriots are blowing them out. This is just a clear overthrow by Stidham, but you still have to give Adams the credit to be able to dart through the defense. So you'll see it here. It's pretty simple. Jamal Adams is up here, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. So, look, here's the throw. This is an easy throw for Stidham, right? Look at this. Look at all that separation. He just floats it and airmails it. It's over the head. Look, all Adams has to do is put his hands up right there. That's it. Catches it, and it's off to the races. And I'm just surprised. See, when I watch this full speed, and I'm going to let you guys watch it full speed because I want you guys to be as impressed as I am. I want you to watch how fast he looks on tape. Let's just play it like this. I want you to watch how fast he looks when he gets the ball in his hands, and I think he plays in a gear. His play speed is not his 40 speed. At all. Um, it just seems different. Here it is. So the throw's up. It's gone. Look, he's gone. Like, and he's just, look, he doesn't even have to wait for that block. That block never happens. And he just cuts it back and just runs in. Like, that's special. That's elite. Yeah. And that's that's what Jamal Adams is, like, guys. Like, I really, um, I really want you guys to understand that when I say that Jaquaski might be a better fit, I'm just saying that, you know, because you can have a poor man's, Jamal Adams and still and and remember there's room for Kwaski to grow that's the right. other thing I think I think that everybody gets wrapped up in the idea of somebody has to come in immediately and contribute like off right. the bat and that's not always the case you done with the screen share yeah I can take it off yeah okay yep 
Um, and I think that a lot of people don't understand that, you know, the, the the normal football player doesn't just come in and dominate right away. Like there's a there's an adjustment period. There's time for you to grow. Also, the people around you, it's hard for you to be strong safety when our defense was poor. You know, like it's it's um you as safety in those years, he's cleaning things up. Now he's a playmaker because there's people around him with the pass rush now and, and now he can do different things. The the main difference that I see when I watch the film with these two guys is Jamal Adams. Something about him. He has an extra gear to him, right? Like, like, like again, I already knew that he was great. But then I watched the film, and it, it just taught me a little bit more about what makes him great. Um, and, and, again, his versatility to be able to play tight ends, be able to play receivers on certain plays, and not be a liability, is, is it's tough to duplicate. It, and you can understand why he wants to make the money that he wants to make. And I also understand 49er fans that are enamored with him and, and, and dream of what this defense could look like with him in it. The problem right. comes into what I won't get into obviously is the contract talks and all those things. Right. Um, but I had a joy of a time. I want to thank you, Dre, really, honestly, yeah, most definitely. Most because definitely. I never, I never would have got into looking at Jamal Adams. Like I've watched his games. I don't really watch. I'll be honest with you guys. I watch some other teams film sometime here and there. I'm really just watching us. Like I'm just trying to, to understand us more than anything because I, you know, I report for the team, you know, as best I can. Yeah. But I, I want to thank you for making me watch this film because, oh, my goodness, man. Like, even when I went back to 2018, um, and that's his, what, second year in the league, right? Yeah. Third year? Yeah. Um, it's it's not even, a, a, like, a light year's difference. It's just him improving. And it's it's crazy to think that there's maybe another gear for, for Jamal Adams to, to unlock, man. Like, and Yeah, man. It's, you know, he... it's just it's certain guys who are just superior athletes compared right. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. um, I mean, and if anybody has ever played, you know, competitive sports, like, you know, when you come up against a guy who you're probably just as good as, but he's just a superior athlete to you. And there's not shit you can do about that. And that is what I think happens with Jaquiski Tart versus Jamal Adams. Like Jaquiski, they play the same. It's just that Jamal Adams is a superior athlete compared to, to Jaquiski Tart. Yeah. And yeah. There's not necessarily – you can't take anything away from Jaquiski. It's just he's a better athlete. You know what right. I mean? Um, so I just thought it was good to, you know, break down a little film and try to get a comparison for people to see um, because there's probably people out there who just hear the name Jamal Adams and have seen a few games and hasn't really been able to break him down and what he does and what makes him so good. And also the same thing with Jaquiski Tart. Um, so, yeah, man, I, I definitely appreciate that. Um I appreciate you having me, but like I said, if you didn't, if you didn't force me, or you didn't tell me that that's what we were doing, I, I would have just, I would have just went off of whatever it is that I, I thought I knew about Jamal. Like, like I, I knew a lot of stuff, but like now I see it differently. And I could talk about it differently because, like, he's just a joy to watch, man. Like, there's, there's certain guys that when you watch their film, it's just like, man, this is fun to watch. And he was definitely one of those guys, man. And yeah. I walked away from Quisky's, um, from Quisky's, um, from his film, more impressed with him. More impressed with how solid, like when you don't hear anything about a player, that's good. I He's think. doing something right. Right, exactly. Yeah. Like there's, there's, you know, like there's something to be said about being even killed, not spiking and then going down, right? If you do all the things right and you're boring, like Tim Dunk is boring, but he's one of the best power forwards of all time. Right. Yeah. So well, there's yeah. something to be said about fundamentals. And I think that Jaquesky Tara is on the cusp of being great. If he has another really great season, then he could really see himself in a position where he can get paid, whether it's the 49ers or whether it's somebody else. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. So, yeah, um, I wanted to get in just a few topics. It's not, sure. you know, uh, a whole bunch we're done of with stuff. we're done with film anyway. So I'm a crack something. Now, let's let's have yeah, some fun real quick. Yeah, yeah, let's have some fun. Yeah, um, so there was an article uh, that was written by uh, NBC 49er Sports, you know, mm -hmm. NBC, you know, they're a huge network, but they do have. Uh, different sectors for every team. Mm. Uh, and that article is basically talking about possibly pairing the Bosa brothers together uh, in that article, because it's, it's, it's known that it's, you know, a family dream to have both of them playing on the same teams. And there has been some speculation that says that the Bosa brothers are both willing to take a pay cut just to be able to play on the same team. Bro. <laughs> He's if he's a, he's a free agent. Op. Well, is it this year? Is it twenty 2020 twenty or twenty twenty one? Twenty twenty one, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. It's yeah. not this next so, year. And I know, and I know the Chargers aren't paying him. 
they don't pay anybody. They don't pay they nobody. Don't, yep. They did it with Drew Brees. They did it with LT. They, the only guy that they paid was Antonio Eckler. And Eckler. They paid. They just. Yeah. But, but they did. But they did Eckler's deal, and it was very, very uh, team friendly. Like the the running back market is not the same. Like Eckler couldn't walk in there and say, "Oh, you know, cash me out." You know, like they 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 worked around it because they understand that Eckler is going to be in tandem with somebody else, just like everybody in the league. The only there's only like one or two teams that employ bell cows, and it's like. Zeke, yeah. it's like CMC and like Henry. Everybody else has somebody that spells them. Exactly. Um, yeah. So, if Bosa brothers, look. If that happens, they definitely both have to take pay cuts for sure, for sure. Right. Like, that's not even. God help right. everyone. God help you all. <laughs> God help you all. Like if if you if you hate the 49ers, you definitely don't want this to happen. God help mm-hmm. Russell Wilson. God help Kyler Murray. Right. Um, because yeah, that's, that's not fair. That's not fair. Yeah. It's There's not. gonna have to be a lot of cat maneuvering, like for something like that to happen. You know, I would suspect that you know a guy like, unfor- look, don't kill me, Trey. A guy like Quan would either have to restructure or just get outright moved. Like, there's a lot of moving parts. Again, if COVID wasn't here, we would know exactly what to expect because the CBA outlined all the cap increases um, for each year. Now, the best that we can do is walk away with a flat cap this year, um, and then who knows? See, that's what that's what makes the Chiefs um, signings a little bit perplexing is because they're they're banking on everything being fine in like Bro, two years. They have one hundred and seventy-seven dollars in cap space right now. Like I got more, they, I got more than in my account. Who can we go sign? Bro, Who am I gonna go get? Bro, Who are we gonna go get? Hey, they about to get some overdraft fees, bro. I mean, I see it as, <laughs> I, I mean, I, I see it as far fetched, right? But just for NBC to write this up and to come out with the story, and you know, basically emphasizing that it's you know basically. Not just them as brothers, but like this is a uh, this is like basically a, a a family goal that they want to have their sons playing on the same team. Um, it's something exciting, and it's just a subject, you know. I just wanted to spit out there. Look, we need uh, we need something to talk about, right? Like we we spent and 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 I have to blame myself too because I've done this. We spent the last three days bitching about Madden ratings. Right. Like that's how bad we need football. Like we're we're yeah. worried about a video game rating you know like so i mean this is a good article and and there is speculation out there and i agree with you that if nbc is reporting this then it's not something that's like coming out of nowhere it's not something not coming out of the world works bro it's actually it's actually a thing um okay man uh now the, i got you know two more subjects uh yep. and they're basically to do with uh the team's improvement um mm-hmm. which do you think will improve more will it be the run offense or the run defense and why well, there's two schools of thought, right? And 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 I'm kind of in this. I'm kind of in this this boat myself. The run defense has to improve because I don't feel like it can be any worse, right? 17 right. in the league. There's no way that that, that happens again. Um, right. They won't get worse, so it's got to get better. Even if it's what a spot, it's got to get better. That's got to right. get better. It's hard right. for the run offense to become better than it was last year because it was so efficient. But it's not out of the realm of possibilities that it can get better, especially when you add Jarek McKinnon into the fold and he's able to contribute and be healthy the entire season. Um, that's not out of the realm of possibilities, honestly, because there's a there's a level to his game that kind of unlocks things when it comes to the 49ers because he's the most polished route runner of all of them. And, it's, and we don't really have – the only guy that we have that's like that is Coleman because most of it does not catch passes. Um, as I watched him, he just – he runs routes and he gets out there, but he's not – you know, he, he doesn't run with uh, the polish – that Coleman does, and neither does Coleman to McKinnon. So um, right. is it possible that the run offense goes up? Yes. But what I would bet on is that the run defense gets better this season. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, all right, bro. So which do you think uh, gets better, the pass offense or the pass defense? I think um, I think it's for sure the pass offense, okay? The reason that I say the pass defense is this. It's – Almost impossible to duplicate how good this pass offense was last year, right? Like, there's no. I mean, wrong, the pass, you mean the pass defense? I mean, the pass, yeah, the pass defense. Like, there's, right. there's, um, there's still a world where the 49ers regress a bit and still are an elite pass defense. Like, I, I think that people on Twitter get upset when you say the 49ers defense is going to regress. When you say that, it's not saying that they're going to be terrible. Is what I'm saying is, is that because they played at an all time level last year, it's kind of impossible to duplicate that again. You know, and if they do, then you know I'll gladly eat my words. Right. But adding in a um Ayuk, adding in um Hurd, adding in Taylor, 
adding in another year for Jimmy G, adding in Trent Williams being able to be better than Joe Stanley. Now, that's the main part. Yeah. That's and the main part. It's hard to not expect this offense to spike when it comes to that because even though last year everybody stacked the box against the Niners, you have to expect everybody to come out and try to stop the run this year. They can try all they want. You know, Kyle's got answers for everything. But exactly. it's definitely going to be an onus on Jimmy to win more games this year, and I, I don't even think that that's even like being in an opinion. That just feels right. Right. Yeah. So it's got to be the pass offense. Most definitely, man. I, I definitely agree with you right there, man. Uh, you know, we were on you know a record set pace last year. Um, it's just going to be hard to top that. Uh, it's going to be hard to, you know, duplicate that over again, man. So I definitely see the past offense uh, being a lot better uh, this year, man. Uh, with that being said, man, you know, that that's that's pretty much, you know, the the topics that I had today, um, you know, for the show. Uh, man, we, we deeply uh, appreciate you coming on and breaking down this film. Um, I, I Like, I'm not really, you know, I, I could look at film, but as far as breaking it down, um, I'm not really that good, man. You know, I appreciate you taking the time out of your week to break this shit down, bro. No problem. And, uh, and, and we definitely going to be in touch to do another film breakdown because there's somebody else that I want to break down to. For, for sure. And, and you know, Dre, um, Bronze too, I know you're watching. Like, I'm, I'm honored to come on here and talk with you guys. Like, you know, I'm just I'm just a guy like you just trying to, you know, just trying to make my way in this and, and to just get on here and, and um, you know, have somebody, you know, respect what I do and, and, and vice versa. It goes both ways. Um, you know, it's a beautiful thing. Like, you know, at the end of the day, um, I just like talking football and, you know, I'll, I, I do it with anybody, but you guys are the first ones to like really invite me onto your platform, um, to discuss this in a way. And, and I, um, I'm honored for that. Most definitely, bro. Yeah, bro. We'll definitely be in touch, bro. We'll probably do something. Uh, I want to break down K1. Uh, Ooh, I love it. Oh man. I love it. Yo, listen, if there is one person on this defense that has a shot to become an all pro next year. I'm gonna put my bag. I'm gonna put my eggs in the basket for K1. The only reason I won't say Warner is because there's too much competition, and like a guy like Levante David has been incredible his entire career and has only been an All Pro one time because Luke Keekley's in there, because Khalil Mack is in. You know, all these guys are in his his conference. You know, right. but I have a feeling that when it comes to if there's a slot corner portion of the All Pros. K1 has a real good shot, man. Like I, I he is so underrated, overlooked. Not spoken about. So, I, you know what? Say less. I'm already working on it. Most definitely. Most definitely, bro. Yeah. So, with that being said, man, we appreciate everybody coming out. Um, I know the show is a little bit short today, uh, but this was, you know, it, it was a film breakdown show. Uh, yeah. You know, we we didn't really, really want to get into too many many other things because the main subjects of this show, as you've seen in the, in the header, was to break down film on Jamal Adams and Jaquiski Tart and compare the two and see what we're getting from each guy. Um, right. Cause it's very important to see that. Um, right. And what we've seen is that Jamal Adams is just a superior athlete compared to Jaquiski Tart. And he, he can just and, do, you know, if, if, if Jaquiski can add in the whole following a receiver around, you know, um, or following a tight end, then yeah. now we've really got something that that's, that's unstoppable. But you know, for Adams to have that in year three, um and and be able to do that with 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 Gronk like I'm sure that they would have no problem throwing him on Kelsey um not at all. that's not at all. that's impressive not at all. yeah yeah that definitely helps man yeah so with that being said man uh you know we'll be back with you guys later on this week um I think we we have uh something scheduled for this week coming up um me and Bronze get get together and make the banner for that and uh I'm supposed to have the signed uh, Brian Young authenticated uh, pitcher that's going to be coming Ooh. in. How uh, I get it? All you got to do, bro, is is subscribe. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Subscribe. And we basically do a drawing and pick names, and you know whatever name that we pick, that's the that's the person that we go with. Um, it was supposed to be here today. Uh, it's already 5:56. You know, so hopefully, you know. So I get a knock on the door because it's supposed to be coming uh, FedEx. So uh, do, with that um, being, do the guys uh, running this uh, take uh, take bribes? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. With that being said, bro, uh, we appreciate uh, everybody you, who's kicking with us today. And, you know, we'll definitely uh, be in contact with you guys and let y'all know when the next show is going to be, bro. We out. Yeah. All right. Peace. Ah. Uh.